Hello everybody and welcome back to Skip Allen Paints and the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. This is video 9 in a series of videos about how I set up my Wacom Cintiq to work with Corel Painter 2015. Okay, so we've talked about just about everything except for touch and we'll get to that uh, during this video I believe. And also we're going to talk mainly though about the radial menu. Now the radial menu in my way of thinking is the most powerful part of the Wacom tablet properties and it's the most underused part as well. Um, there, there's this, this little thing allows you to have so many commands at your fingertips that you can, you can program almost every command that you can uh, imagine inside of this program and have room to spare. But let's take a look at it. We're looking at the Wacom tablet properties and on the left hand side you have top which is the beginning of the menu system and this menu system will build as you add things to uh, the radial menu. On this side we have functions and this looks just like or very similar to express keys. If we wanted to do a keystroke, we could click on keystroke, put in the keystroke, we could clear it or delete it. We can put the name of what this function is and say OK, and we've programmed it to a particular place. Now, I think this is the default setting that the Cintiq was set to, and I believe these are mostly uh, Photoshop commands. OK, so how would I suggest setting this thing up so that it works? When I first started making a using the radial menu, I would just put in commands willy-nilly, and then I couldn't remember <laughs> where the commands were. Uh, but before I get into that, I just realized that I probably should first say that using this, we've got eight potential commands that we can put in. Well, eight commands is not much, right? Uh, and, you, and I told you that you could do many. Well, here's the way it works. If you click on brush panel or any one of these, you see that when, it, when you click on it, this little line indicates that it's active. And let's go back to brush stroke. I can come here and change that to submenu. Now, when it changes it to submenu, I get another little submenu uh, uh, menu over here. But then I can take this and change that to a different name. And so let's say I change it to file. Okay. Now, once I change it to file, it changes over here in the submenu. If I select file, then what I now see are eight more um, programmable areas. Okay, so what I'm saying is that you can take this thing and make multiple layers going, making multiple commands in sort of a hierarchy uh, setup. I, I'm trying to think of the way to describe it, and I really can't. But what I did was that I mentioned that when I set up my radial menu before, I sort of added commands willy-nilly, and I never could remember where they were. So I finally hit on the idea that after you've been using any software for a while, you pretty much know what your menu system is up here, and you have to go up here and click on File, and then New, to bring up, say, a new document. So if I worked my radial menu based on the menu system, that would be the best way to work it. So if I name my first uh, block file, then what I want to do is put in commands that are from the file menu. Now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 commands and only 8 spots. So I have to make some decisions here. I would probably never email the image, or if I did, I could come up to file and email. I wouldn't do a page setup and I never print, and I wouldn't exit this way. So these four are out. Now the rest of these I probably would use except for Control-W. So that leaves me one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. So those eight commands would fit in my radial dial quite nicely. But let's assume that I had more than those eight commands and I needed to put those more than those eight under file. Well, then what I would do is I would look and see how I might could group some. So I might would group quick clone and clone. All right. So if I go back over here, I've got eight spots, but I've got more than eight spots to fill. So I would take my first one, change it to a submenu, and let's call it clone. Okay. Now, if I do that and I come over here, I now have clone. So if I click on clone, I can come over here to my file menu and see that file, <laughs> see that quick clone is control alt Q and clone is control shift C. Now those are probably uh, one of them anyway, is probably one that I created. Okay. So what I'd want to do is go back to the property and in the first one, I would say keystroke and it would be, um, I think it was, let's see, control alt Q. So come back here and I would type in control alt Q. Now when I say type in, I'm just hitting those keys on the keyboard. And then I would come down here and name it quick clone, just like we did. <laughs> for uh, express keys and I would say okay then I would come to the next one keystroke and in this case it's control shift C oops I don't know what that was that I just hit and we come over here to the name and we would call this clone and we would say okay so now I have under clone two commands under file, I have one submenu, but I could come over here and change this one to keystroke and we put in control N, which is the shortcut for new image. And we say, okay, and we come to the next one and we put in keystroke and we go control uh, O, that's open existing image. And we'd say, OK, now I would go around here and do the rest of the controls or commands that I have under the file menu. Now, you're getting the idea of how this works. See, what I've done is I've programmed starting with the top menu. I have first file and then under file, I have clone or I have uh, other kind of commands that are there. So if I minimize this, now I said I set my Wacom back up to uh, default, which I did, except I didn't set my pen back to default so that I could still bring up the uh, Wacom uh, radial menu. So if I click on file, now I can click on new image and that brings up my new image dialog box. I can click on file and click on open existing and my open dialog box comes up. I can click on file clone and do quick clone. And there you have a quick clone has suddenly popped up and see how fast this um, uh, works for you and how easy it is. Once you get the idea of how you set your uh, tablet up now, Remember, I set this thing back to default. This, that's an important thing to remember. As you're setting up your Wacom tablet, you want to save it and keep saving it. And you do that by going to, and I don't know if this will show over here in my programs list, but I want to open up my Wacom tablet Tab, my tablet preference file utility. Now, if you're on a Mac, it's going to look a little different. It probably has a different name, but it's basically a file utility. And you have the ability to remove or back up or restore uh, your Wacom setup. So what you want to do is back up your Wacom uh, settings frequently. Okay, and that's what I've done is I've backed it up and then I can come in and restore it. 
So let's uh, let's see what I want to do next. Let's let's go ahead and restore my Wacom setup. So we click on restore, and I've saved it under a file called Custom Painter Stuff Wacom Backup Cintiq, and then I date the file so that I know when I uh, last backed it up, and that was today. And we click on Open. And it says it will replace the current preferences. Continue, and yes, I want to replace, because what I had were those things that I just put in, and what I want to get back to are my uh, complete preferences. So now when I open up my Wacom and I go to Functions and Radial Menu, you'll see that it's much more complex uh, because this is the way I had it set up before. Now, I want to talk about... So basically what I have here is I have File Function, Edit Functions, Canvas, and Layers because in the case of Canvas, there are a few that I need and I didn't want to waste those couple. And in layers, I have a whole bunch I need. So if we look at canvas layers, we'll see that I have some layer information here. Under canvas, if I click on canvas, I have resize and canvas size. If I click on, click on this layer, I have these kinds of layers. If I click on mask, I have these mask things that I can click on. And if I click on watercolor, then I have my watercolor layer commands that are here. And all of this would be under my submenu called Canvas Layers. So that's my main clue. I know that those kind of functions will be under Canvas Layer. Then I have brushes, I have selections, effects, and window. I did save one um, part of the pie for adva advanced brush controls because I want to be able to get to that very quickly since I, you know, uh, create a lot of brushes. All right, so that's the process that I work with. Now, let's go to touch for a second because this is very important. With touch, you do want to have enable touch input if you're working with a touch device. If you don't like to work with touch, then just uncheck that and you won't have to worry with using it. But you want to click on Enable Touch and then use Wacom Gestures if you're planning on using these Wacom Gestures. But here's another thing to think about. The Gestures, if you come up to Edit Preferences or in the case of the Mac, uh, Corel Painter 2015 Preferences, and you go to Tablet, you'll see that you have tablet options. And Wacom Compatible Device is required. So you click on that, it's inside the Cintiq, and then Multi-Touch Options. If you enable Multi-Touch, that will reduce Painter to using only the touch options that are written into Painter. And they, they took the Wacom uh, touch properties not all of them, but some of them, and they made them better, okay? They they made like the zoom real smooth and, and so forth. Uh, so if you enable multi-touch, you will not be able to get to the gestures. Now, if you don't enable multi-touch, then the, the touch functions inside of Painter will not be utilized, but the gesture functions that you have here in my gestures will be utilized. So right now I've got the radial menu by clicking down three fingers and that would bring up the radial menu. If I have my Wacom set up, I mean my painter set up for enable multi-touch, that won't happen. Except, and this is important because I, I think I need to make sure you understand this. When I reset my Wacom tablet, it reset almost everything. So if I click with three fingers now, I'm bringing up the um, the touch functions. And if I were to try to use the zoom, that's not going to work. I'm, I'm getting the painter things. What all that is telling you is that once you go back and restore your settings, you need to close Painter 
and reopen it. Okay, and you want to do that because it gives it an opportunity to reset the preferences. And so once I reopen Painter, and let's say we close this, and I'll go in here and I'll go to File Functions, New Document, and I want that document that we normally have, and I'll bring that open like this. Now, if I use my three finger touch, you can't see that I'm doing it, but I am. I'm touching with three fingers and the uh, the gestures are not coming in, but I can use my two fingers to change or rotate and see how smooth that is. I think I mentioned this in one of the other videos. Um, so when when you restore, be sure to uh, open painter again. Okay, now let's look at this uh, preferences again, just real quickly. We'll go back to functions and radio menu. And remember, I've set these up in multiple layers based on my uh, menu system for Painter. And if you were doing this for Photoshop, I would do the same thing. I would set it up for based on the menu system because that you, you really think that way now. And if you don't, if there's something you're searching for, it's not going to kill you to go in and, you know, click file functions. That's not it. Bring in edit. That's not it. Bring in, bring in canvas. Oh, there it is. New watercolor layer. Click, you know, and, and um, I'm all set. And, and I'm I really find that this is a very fast and convenient way to work. Now, I think I'll do one more quick video that it's not about setting up the Wacom at all, but I'll just try to paint a little something real quick and utilize my uh, radial menu and my Wacom uh, tablet to show you how it works in action. Okay, so that's it for this video. We'll be back in a few minutes. Bye-bye.